Hey everybody, happy Halloween and welcome back to the Sanctum. Halloween is to this day still my favorite holiday. Uh, just the excitement building up to it. I mean, growing up a as a monster kid and a kid who loved horror movies and, and monsters and, and pretty much all things theatrical. I mean, how could I not love Halloween? Um, the whole part about it and, and one of the best parts about Halloween was going into the local drugstore or child world or department store on or around, you know, when it was getting close to Halloween and seeing the Halloween aisle decked out with boxes and boxes of costumes. And it was just amazing. And, and the main people that sold those costumes were Ben Cooper and, and Collegeville. They were the two main, main costume purveyors back in the day. And I just loved those costumes and, and going in there and I, I would pour over the costumes trying to decide what I wanted to be for Halloween. And um, recently over the last year or two, I've started going down this rabbit hole of collecting old Ben Cooper Collegeville, you know, vintage Halloween masks and costumes. And we're going to take a look at some of those here today. Just like the Halloween season, we're going to start off slow here and build up to the excitement of the cool costumes. Um, on top of just having the costumes out, they would sell the masks individually. So you would go into your local Woolworths and they would have these things on, on hangers, in rows of boxes. They'd have mask racks. I mean, I know they've got spirit Halloween stores today and... and and Walmart and, and Lowe's and Home Depot put all up, pull out all their, their cool Halloween, deco Halloween decorations. But honestly, nothing compares to me like Halloween from my childhood. And, and maybe that's the way for everybody. But I don't know. There was just something so special about the 70s and early 80s Halloween and the 60s as well, I guess. Um, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there in the 60s. But just these costumes in general just how exciting they'd be to, to shop for this. And it was such a cool thing to get. Um, who doesn't remember trying to see out of the eye holes of these damn things or getting their mouth cut on the breathing hole on the lips or, or the, the, you know, the, just the sweat that would form on the inside of the mask about five minutes after you hit the road. Um, here's a couple of masks I, or three, three masks I picked up in a lot. Um, they're really still in great condition. Uh, they've got great paint jobs on them. That was the thing is about how colorful these masks were. Um, they did get broken very easily, but, um, you know, I've got here, you've got Woody Woodpecker over there, obviously. And, you know, here you go. Those, those wonderful eye holes. How you'd be walking down the street, looking at everybody coming at you. Um, this one's got the nose hole, this little mouth hole where you Slice your tongue wide open. Uh, this one's cool. It's still got the price tag on it. Um, it does not have the elastic band. It broke off, which usually would happen when you'd be out trick-or-treating anyway. But uh, really cool colors on that. I really kind of dig it. I just got it because it came in a lot, but it's not bad to have. This one here is a pirate, or um, possibly they might say it was a gypsy back in the day, but I think it was supposed to be the pirate one. You can even see it has the bigger eye hole, like there was supposed to be an eye patch there that they took away. Uh, you know, Ben Cooper was notorious for reusing its molds and, uh, you know, recycling different masks with different paint jobs. And um, honestly, I think way back in the day, this was supposed to be the guy from, um, he looks a lot like the guy from Pinocchio um, that, that takes all the kids, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, but very cool, very cool paint job. He's missing his elastic band. He's still got his, uh, his mask fastener there or his, or his thing, you know, 69 cents is what this would cost back in the day. Very cool. And then this one is really cool to me. I don't know why. It's sort of like some funky sixties chick or something like that. Or it's supposed to be like a, a bohemian or a beatnik The the hair is flocked. It's actually very, you know, it's got that flocking on it. She's wearing these cool sort of eyeglasses. The eyebrows are flocked too. It almost looks like they repainted like a vampire mask or a Morticia Adams mask. And this one's definitely a lot older because it's got, it doesn't have a price tag. 
He's got the price stamp, and it's just 49 cents, so it was pretty cheap. Um, really cool looking mask. I really dig that one. So we're starting off with some masks. Now let's work our way into the costume section. Okay, so one of the first full costumes we have here is from the Western Hero costume and mask line. Um, what was really cool about Ben Cooper and Collegeville and things like that is not only, they wouldn't just put them in generic boxes. I mean, at times they would, and it sort of went that way. But a lot of times they, they put a lot of effort into the boxes for the costumes as well, the packaging of, of the boxes, which, you know, to, to nowadays people are probably like, this is so simple. But, you know, this is, this is a time before style guides were a thing where corporate entities sort of said these are the only logos you can use um if you're going to license our product and and companies sort of just had free reign to do whatever they wanted um this one is from the lone ranger uh, line obviously and um you know the lone ranger sort of had this resurgence in the 70s for some reason you know you have the gabriel toy line um it was appearing in reruns on tv um, it, it was still, you know, the, I, th I think the movie was in the works. I don't think the movie came out till the, uh, you know, the early 80s. But, um, you know, there was this resurgence of sort of pulp heroes of yesteryear um, in the 70s for some reason. And I don't know if it was sort of like a, a marketing bait to sort of get grandparents and, and parents to buy stuff that they remembered as a kid for their kid or to get them to sort of like it. Um, and this one here is from the Western Hero costume and mask line. And again, I, I think it's really cool that Ben Cooper, they also named their lines. You know, they had a monster line. They had a superheroes line. They had a TV heroes line. Uh, and this is the Western Hero line. Now, one of the things I always remember about going into the store and seeing these costumes on the rack is that they were never really presented like this. Sometimes you'd have the, um, the costume itself with the mask hanging in a, in a display up, way up above the sales floor. Sometimes they'd have them on racks that you could buy, but usually they had shelves full of these Ben Cooper and Collegeville costumes. And they were like this. So it was sort of, you know, it was like being in a, a shoe store and you'd see, you know, the name of the character you want and the size and you'd pull it out. And there's that, Ben Cooper logo. I mean, that is is iconic to me. That logo. It's 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 as iconic as the the Universal Globe from Universal Pictures or Twentieth Century Fox. Uh, I mean, there are certain logos that stick with you, and there's something about seeing that logo that just you know makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So anyhow, you've got the Western Hero box, and again, you know, look at the great illustration. You know, some guy had to illustrate this. It's not a cut and paste job, you know, which is kind of cool. They just have this great illustration of that's supposed to be Tonto. And there's the Lone Ranger, some type of mountain man. And then there's Davy Crockett coming out of the saloon. And again, just the work that went into it. I mean, here's even a different picture of the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding the planes, you know, on silver. Um, so much cooler before there were style guides. And I mean, there were style guides. I think in the 70s and 80s, but it wasn't as strictly adhered to as today where everything's a bit more generic. Um, cool thing about this is again, you all know I love price tags on my items. Um, $249, it's Ray's price. So wherever, is that Ray's or Faye's? Jesus, I'm going blind. Fry's price. <laughs> but um, very cool, very cool costume. And then you would do the old wrap the cellophane and you'd open it up in the store because it wouldn't be covered in saran wrap or any of that stuff. So you could see what the costume looked like. And there we go. There's our good friend, Tonto. And uh, let's open up the, the costume and see what it looks like. I'm, I'm sorry if some of the background is showing here. These, these are... I was having the most difficult time trying to figure out how to film these to show the whole costume without having to revert to vertical vision. Um, one of my solutions was I asked my daughter if she would uh, put these on and, and wear the mask and, and wear the costume so I could film her in the costumes. And she was like, no way. She, she wasn't having it. So 
this is the best I could do for now. Um, I apologize. It's not the most professional job. Um, but I do want you guys to see the costume with the mask. Uh, unfortunately, we can't see the the entire, you know, you're not missing much with the with the footsies part. Um, he, he's got some orange pants there. Uh, if you really want to see it, I'll, I'll sort of rip down. There you go. Um, so what we've got on this one here is here is Tonto with his mask and his outfit. And um, I'm going to do some closer up shots, show the mask, show the outfit. All right. So here we have the Tonto jumpsuit, tunic, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, these were always a one piece item. Uh, you know, it was like getting into a little little jumpsuit. Uh, this one is completely made of vinyl. Um, I, it's like a pool toy. Uh, I mean, if you could, if you were here and you could smell it. It, it has that like old pool toy vinyl smell. Um, both the, the pants are made of like vinyl and the uh, the outfit itself. Now, of course, the, the cool thing about these store-bought costumes that everybody always talks about is rather than going for the body being part of the character itself, in other words, you know, if it's Tonto, let's just have it be Tonto's buckskins, pants, etc. This, they all tended to have like a photo of the character not a photo, an illustration or a drawing of the character on the outfit itself. Um, and this one is kind of a hybrid because it's like Tonto's outfit. He's got the shirt collar there. He's got the belt. And you can see what the start of the pants. But then there's this great illustration of Tonto himself on the thing. And that was pretty much the way, you know, Ben Cooper Collegeville, they, they all did their costumes that way. Um, but what I think is so cool about it is it makes these costumes themselves, to me, just works of art. And, and that's part of the reason I collect them. Uh, I mean, numerous reasons I collect them is, number one, nostalgia. I, I'm looking for the costumes that I wore as a kid. Uh, I'm looking for the costumes that I wish I could have worn as a kid. I mean, I, I wish I could have had a hundred Halloweens as a kid because there were so many. There just wasn't enough Halloweens for the amount of Collegeville costumes or, or, or Ben Cooper costumes that I wanted to wear. And um, I'm sorry, I'm drifting off a little bit here, but to go back to that, they're all just fantastic works of art. I mean, look at these illustrations again, pre-style guide times. There's this really cool, I mean, that's a really cool drawing of Tonto. Uh, you know, he's got his gun at the draw. I mean, another thing is, like, you wouldn't have a costume nowadays where the guy's got the gun drawn pointing at someone. Nice colors, nice colors on the headband. You've got some reds, some blues, you know, blacks and browns in there. And they always did this big splash, you know, behind him, like Tonto's coming out of the, the comic strip. And then, of course, his name, Tonto. And that was always the way they did it, right? Like, they, they always had the name of the character you were on there. So it was like, picture of the character a name of the character it's almost as if like ben cooper or they were trying to be like proactive as if you know like oh look henry we've got some trick-or-treaters at the door and what are you oh you're tonto henry there's a tonto at the door my husband henry used to listen to the lone ranger on the radio every saturday evening he loves the lone ranger he loves tonto henry come here oh wow look at that a tonto <laughs> I used to listen to the Lone Ranger every Saturday afternoon. Hey, help yourself to some Necco wafers. Uh, happy Halloween! <laughs> Probably something along those lines, right? So, I mean, again, Hall Halloween to me was like, I don't know, these costumes were just comic books come to life, movies come to life, action figures come to life like the, the whole neighborhood the whole world at that time w was alive with these vibrant colors and vibrant characters and everybody wore these i mean you had a couple of the kids that would wear makeup or wear their homemade costumes or or have some higher end costumes and the older kids would just you know put a little makeup on their face and wear a t-shirt and carry a you know a pillowcase around but when, when i was a kid literally almost all the kids in the neighborhood had these all the kids at the school Halloween parties wore these. And it was always, and sometimes you'd have doubles, like, oh my God, there's there's two Tontos here today, or there's, you know, four Frankensteins. It, it didn't matter. It was cool. And it was, 
it was cool to see what your friends were going to be. You, you'd talk about it for days on end. Um, I know I was a Ben Cooper clown one year. Um, and then I'm going to talk about some of the other ones uh, later on in the episode. But um, this one's very cool. This one spoke to me because I, I really like Western movies. Um, I dug The Lone Ranger as a kid as well, too. And, of course, we've got this great mask. I mean, this is a very cool mask. I mean, I really dug the way that they did their faces. They look like real faces. They had great paint jobs. I mean, I don't know if these were, they obviously weren't hand painted, but the color coordination is great. I mean, look at the colors on his feather there, the texture on his feather for, for what's a cheap plastic mask. I mean, these are really, really well done. Um, he's got, you know, his, his, his hairstyle and his headband there and very colorful headband, almost neon like colors. Um, they give him kind of a suntanned look because he's obviously been out in the sun. Uh, this mask is in great condition. Normally, they're all ripped apart down here. Um, this one even still has the rubber band, which is usually missing. Um, and there's no cracks on this one at all. Very, very cool. And uh, this is what you would look like walking down the street if you were to come upon another Tonto. So there you have it. Ben Cooper, 1977, Tonto. Now, we talked about costumes that I wished I could be. This is one that I actually was. This is one that I distinctly remember being, and I even have photographs of myself in this costume. Um, this isn't my actual costume, my, my actual Planet of the Apes costume. I did have for a while. I held on to it as a kid. It made its way up to our attic. And at some point, uh, I, when my mom moved out of the house after we had graduated college, the Planet of the Apes costume was lost. But I have reacquired one, and um, I loved this. I mean, I was just a massive Planet of the Apes fan, and still am to this day. And, uh, I mean, it all goes back to when I wore this costume. I must have been four years old, five years old, but I distinctly remember it. And it is an awesome costume. And, and, and I mean, look at that box art right there. You've got sort of that... Um, in a way, it kind of looks like some of the Azrak Hamway art uh, on some of the rack toys that they would use for Planet of the Apes. Again, you've got this weird blonde Dr. Zaius with a blue tunic. And then you've got, you know, Cornelius and Zira uh, in their orange tunics. And they're, they're, they're like in the Arizona desert. They're hanging out in Sedona or something like that because there's all these cactuses around. But again, great artwork. <laughs> Goofy smiling. Galen. That, that's almost like it's based off of the uh, Edward G. Robinson makeup from the, the test footage uh, and Dr. Zaius. And then, you know, you've got this is the Warrior. Large. That awesome Ben Cooper logo. Uh, 1974. Some more artwork on the side. Pretty cool. Let's take a look. No cellophane on this one, but let's take a look at this. Now, before we put this up, I just noticed that when I opened up the box, it's got the name D. Robbins inside. Again, there's that patina I like. This was D. Robbins. I don't know if it's Dan Robbins, Dean Robbins, Don Robbins, David Robbins, Damian Robbins, Dirk Robbins, Dick Robbins, Derwood Robbins. Whatever it is, D. Robbins, if you're out there and you see this, I have your Planet of the Apes costume. Reach out to me. I'm not going to give it to you because I paid a good amount of money for this and keeping it. But I just wanted you to know that I've got it. I'd like to hear the story behind it. So here we have the warrior ape in his glory. This one is pure awesomeness. I, I, I'm just in awe right now just looking at it um i mean you guys can't see the whole thing and I'll, I'll take some some footage of it so you can see the thing from bottom to top but it's got a vinyl chest plate it's got rayon pants and then it has these vi vinyl things at the end so it's like you're wearing boots and that's what i dug about this costume when i was a kid it is 
it's the ape outfit. So it's again, it's like one kind of like Tonto. It's a hybrid, right? It's the actual uniform that the ape would wear, but it's this cool green, you know, chest plate. And then it's this bandolier with this scimitar sword in there. And then you've got this badge on his on his thing that just says warrior ape. And then you've got Planet of the Apes off to the side. So again, you know, if, if somebody's coming, you know, to the door, they, they can be identified. I guess it, it's just, you know, for, for, for neighbors to know who you're supposed to be and not have to ask you questions so you're not screaming through the mask. It's, who are you? Planet of the Apes, you know, who? The Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's Planet of the Apes, Henry. I'll give him some Necco wafers and send him on his way. And again, what, what speaks to me about this co costume is the, the, I don't know, the, the artistic license behind it that they took. They made an effort to make it look like a uniform. At the same time, they've got these cool illustrations on there. And, and it's just warrior ape. Um, you know, they don't make it Urko or Ursus or, or Aldo or anything like that. And just the primary colors of the whole outfit. Again, it, it's like it's like I was an ape out of the Marvel Comics comic book, uh, which made it even cooler. I mean, look at the, the coloring of the, the paint job on the mask there. They just had these vibrant colors, and everything was just so alive on these outfits. It's what really made them so cool. Um, I really dig that mask there. I dig the you know the way they've got the neon kind of paint job on it. I love the green color for the chest plate. Um, and then he's got you know the bright red pants, along with um, some other stuff uh, you know with the black boots section. Planet of the Apes. D. Robbins, if you're out there, we're brothers in Planet of the Apes, buddy. Or maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a girl, Danielle Robbins, Deidre Robbins. Either way, hey, more power to you. Um, you know what, what? I always wonder when I look at these is, I wonder why nobody has decided to market adult size Ben Cooper costumes. I think there's there's a, there's a market for that, and somebody needs to do that. Make adult size Ben Cooper costumes. I'd buy one. I'd buy this one for sure. Um, I mean, somebody out there, make us adult size Ben Cooper costumes, please, because I cannot fit into this. I mean, I could, but it would be very scary. Well, since we're on the subject of cool apes, we got to go with the coolest ape of all, King Kong. And if you were alive in the seventies. You could not miss all of the advertising and marketing material that came out in 76 for Dino De Laurentiis' remake of King Kong. I mean, as a kid in the mid-70s, you could not escape King Kong mania. The merchandise was everywhere. Th this iconic picture of King Kong was plastered on everything. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe adults could miss it, but me as a kid, I, I was dying to see this movie. I mean, that picture of like King Kong straddling the twin towers was just like, I was like, this is going to be amazing. And, uh, especially when you're a monster kid and this King Kong really holds a special place in my heart. Um, it's my King Kong. It's the King Kong that I grew up with. I mean, I had seen the original King Kong as a kid a little kid and, and on TV and I really enjoyed it and thought it was fun. But this thing was just looked like it was going to be amazing to me. And the merchandise for it, like I said, was everywhere. So I definitely was wanted to have been this when I was, was there as well. This is an awesome costume. Well, let's take a look at it. Okay. Again, it is in that cool, you know, monster box which is i love this box for the the ben cooper costumes the monster costumes you've got the mummy with the bloody eye the gill man the wolf man uh frankenstein and we've got king kong ben cooper logo and it's a large um and again you've got this this from kmart stamped on there three dollars and 27 cents Okay, and here we go. Again, we've got a hybrid costume, right? 
you've got that iconic artwork of King Kong that was on the movie poster. But look at the, the fantastic colors they do because they can't reproduce the colors from the poster. So you've got that jet in all these primary colors exploding that he's holding in his hand. You've got a cool Jessica laying in his other hand. You've got another jet heading towards him. They've tried to sort of reproduce that that Kong from the pit, the, from the, the poster, from the promotional art. He's straddling the Twin Towers. You've got King Kong below. But this is all emblazoned on the chest of what must be King Kong because you've got this furry belly around him and chest and furry arms. But then he's wearing, you know, black pants, which I guess was just supposed to be his furry legs. So um, I believe Dana Gould coined the phrase on these costumes best. It's like, it's as if King Kong is going out dressed as a fan of King Kong. So it's like King Kong is like, hey, here's a shirt with me on it. Um, but very cool. Um, one of the things when I've been going through these costumes and as I pick them up is how small the masks are. I always remember them being so big for some reason as a kid. Like, I don't know why. I mean, maybe they were small, but like to me now they seem so tiny. Um, and they're not that small, but, but again, very cool mask. They, they reproduce that, that screaming mouth of Kong, um, really cool paint job, lots of blacks and, and blue specks in there and everything like that. And, um, let's take a little bit closer look at this. So here we go with our, our cool Kong outfit. Uh, again, this one's got vinyl chest and rayon legs. It's always a lovely combination when you're, you're just nice and sweaty come the night's end. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much sweat from, from you know, 12 year old kids is in these in these costumes. Um, but it's, you know, I know that when I used to wear them, you'd be sweating like crazy. And, and I mean, I don't know how these survived, which I, I'm really amazed that this costume survived. Uh, even in the box, the boxes are never in great shape. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't really have any that are mint boxes. They're all either missing cellophane or dinged up or banged up. And, and these things are honestly a pain in the neck to store. But, you know, I love them. I can't stop buying these things. Um, but anyhow, I'm, I'm off on a tangent. And here's that, a little bit closer look at that great shot of, of King Kong with that iconic drawing that they did of him that appeared on everything in 1976. Very cool, very cool photo. There's uh, little Jessica Lang patting Kong on the chest or on the chin. Um, and here's a little bit closer look at the mask. You can see they've got like they, these little like blue chips in there for the skin. They did that in a lot of them. And then you've got the lips. Very cool, awesome. King Kong. Honestly, it's my favorite King Kong to this day. I know that's sacrilege, but we're, we're going to do an episode about this on uh, Can You Dig It Film Club and uh, talk about the De Laurentiis King Kong. Very cool. Cue the John Barry score. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'm having a, a tough day at work or a tough day in general, and I just have to go and peruse eBay. Or I'm up late at night and I can't sleep and I'm, I'm cruising through eBay. And something like this pops up. And I go ahead and I buy it. Because for some reason, I decide I have to own this. And now I do. You're looking at a Collegeville ape man costume. No mask big hole in the middle of it but I just had to have this uh, I don't know why because it, it's sort of this like planet of the apes knockoff obviously it's trying to be a planet of the apes knockoff but what what fascinated me about it and, and this one's all rayon so I'm wondering if it's I'm thinking it's like early 70s uh you know so fairly recent to the the planet of the apes costumes so what I dug about it was the cool artwork on the front and that the ape man is just sort of like just these guys dressed with rolled up jeans, you know, utility belts, an open shirt, you know, a, a t-shirt, you know, just regular dudes. Kind of reminds me a little bit about the uh, of that Japanese film, Time of the Apes. I love that this ape here, the main ape, 
he's holding nothing in his hand. He's just got this closed fist. Like he's like, you know, they forgot to put the club there. And of course the world is burning behind them. So we're definitely in some type of post-apocalyptic future where the ape man is king. I own this. Now you've seen it. And you can't unsee it. Continuing with some of our rarities, um, you've got this cool mask that I remember seeing as a kid, and it's called the NASA Astro Spook. And uh, what this is doing is, it, again, how, how Ben Cooper repurposed things. It's, it's a Frankenstein mask inside a NASA astronaut face. Uh, and it's just really cool to me because they're combining two things, space travel and the monster craze that was popular in the late 60s, early 70s. And I don't know if this is a zombie astronaut in outer space. It's Frankenstein they sent into outer space. It's an astronaut that died in outer space and turned into a zombie. Either way, it's super creepy. Uh, and, and I guess you could play, you know, first man into space with this or, or Frankenstein versus the space monster. Um, but it's it's really, really cool mask. I really dig it. Um, and I love having it as part of my collection. And it's just that cool, like, they, they went with, like, yellow for Frankenstein or with, for the face. And, um, again, you've got that. And I think this this was later to be repurposed into the Evil Knievel costume, where that was to be Evil Knievel's helmet. Next up is The Mummy. Um, this is an original 1960s Ben Cooper Mummy costume. I bought this separately. Um, it's rayon and the centerpiece is all cloth. Very cool illustration of the mummy on that with the bloody hands and the, and the cobra down below and, and the mummy font up there in the, on the shoulder. Um, really, really nice piece. I really dig it. it it's, it's awesome. Again, I wish I could frame this. Uh, maybe one day I will because it, it's so cool. Um, it didn't come with the mask. It didn't come with the box. I, I purchased this other mummy mask separately. Um, this is also a Ben Cooper mummy mask, but this is from the 70s. And actually my favorite version of the mask is it appears closest to Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, from the Universal Mummy movies, like the mummy's ghost and the mummy's hand and things like that. Um, I really dig it. It's got that, as you can see from the eye coming out, that, that sort of neon paint, which is supposed to be the blood seeping from the mummy's eye. Uh, it's got some cool greens and, and a variety of different things there. Uh, a really, really cool piece. I love that mask. Um, very awesome. And it's a very cool piece. And I hope you enjoy it. Next up is our man of peace. David Carradine as Kane from Kung Fu. Now, how could I not get this? This is, this is typical 70s. Um, I, I love the show Kung Fu. And, and that's what I love about these these licensed characters that Collegeville and Ben Cooper license is like, just you're so surprised at some of the things that are out there that you can find. Um, and that's the fun of collecting these costumes. You're like, I can't believe they made a costume of that. Now, this one isn't entirely unbelievable. It was a very popular show back in the seventies. Um, and Kung Fu craze was popular too. Um, so, so why not? And this one doesn't even make any bones about it, that it's trying to be the Kung Fu outfit. It's just, a picture of David Carradine, which not a bad representation of him, doing his sort of Shaolin exercise and his Kung Fu Gi. And, um, you know, with this, this just font of, of sparks coming out behind him or flames or whatever it is. And then you've got this this mask up there of, of him as the Shaolin David Carradine. I wonder why they didn't go for the Western version with the cowboy hat and the long hair. Um, that would have been kind of cool if they had done that. But um, very cool. I had to have it. David Carradine, Kane from Kung Fu. Next up is Dracula. Now, I don't have the mask and I don't have the box on this. This is the 1978 Ben Cooper Dracula. Um, I bought this solely on the artwork alone. Um, I just love this interpretation of Dracula. Uh, very cool illustration on the, on the body there. Um, Obviously, the artist was going for a Christopher Lee-style Dracula or a Hammer Dracula. You've got the bloodshot eyes. You've got the blood gushing out of the mouth. Um, it's really cool that you've got these sort of clawed hands reaching forward. 
and then you've got Dracula up there in the corner, which looks very much like Dracula would appear in the Hammer film titles, and then a bat flying over the moonlight. Um, it's a great piece. Uh, I wish I could display it more often, but um, honestly, I, I bought this online, and I swear to God, the, the kid that trick-or-treated in this must have smoked stogies all night long, because this thing, it it it's awful. I'm getting a scratchy throat and a headache just breathing in what's coming off of this costume. It uh, Honestly, it smells like Burt Young's t-shirt drawer. I need to get it back in a plastic bag and away from me before uh, I just pass out here. So, um, Count Dracula, enjoy and be glad that this is an in smell of vision like I said, I like to collect pieces um, even without the masks just because of the artwork on them. And this one I had to get. This is Dark Wolf from Fire and Ice. There's numerous reasons I had to get this. I'm a huge Ralph Bakshi fan, even though like I find his films difficult to get through. There's something about his animation that I've always been kind of a fan of. I'm a huge Frank Frazetta fan. Frank Frazetta designed a lot of the drawings for this film. Um, and this is just such a cool licensed piece that they even licensed this at all for a costume. It's, um, you know, it was from the film Fire and Ice from 1982, Ralph Bakshi. It's a Collegeville costume. And the other cool thing about this piece is this was a store display piece. So as you can see, it's, it's stapled onto this hanger and the mask would go there. Uh, and the mask is obviously missing. Um, but this is something that would be hanging up in the store as a display so people could see what the costume looked like. Um, I'm trying to track down the mask for this. If anybody has any leads or has one, um, if you'd be kind enough to, you know, contact me on my Facebook page or uh, put something in the comments below, I'd appreciate it because I really would like to get the mask for this costume. But um, in the meantime... Check this out. Dark Wolf, Ralph Bashke, Bakshi, Frank Frazetta. Cool piece, and it, it's a rare costume you don't see come up that often, or at least I haven't seen it come up that often. And and again, uh, the thing that spoke to me about this was it's one of those pieces that's on a display thing. So it, it's like old store stock, or it came from somebody's store, um, and I really love that. Next up, a pretty rare piece. Godzilla. This is the 78 Ben Cooper Godzilla costume. It's kind of a rare piece uh, and, and it's more difficult to come by than some of the other costumes. Um, it, it, it's a very cool costume. It's got, you know, again, you've got sort of the centerpiece is the scales of Godzilla. Then you've got a picture of Godzilla on the front and uh, you've got this really cool mask that... Uh, they, they tried to attempt the flames coming out of Godzilla's mouth. Um, so, I don't know, it's very difficult. Uh, they, they did give it, you almost look like baby Godzilla. I mean, I'll give them credit for kind of putting a snout on it. Um, it it's a cool piece, and you got to have it. If you have King Kong, you have to have Godzilla. And um, I think they put this out in the 70s, uh, because in the late 70s, Godzilla was getting on a lot of merchandise uh, in America, and probably due to the fact that there was a Marvel comic coming out at that time, uh, the Godzilla font on this looks exactly like the Godzilla font from the Marvel Comics comic. Um, cool piece. I really dig it. It's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Coming up next, Sanctum viewers, the rarest piece in my collection and the conclusion of the Dr. Durant Sanctum's Halloween special. Right after this, station identification. Now, like we stated before, Collegeville and Ben Cooper, they licensed all sorts of properties for costumes. And they went with some of the sci-fi greats and TV hits and superheroes. And, 
And they had some real odds and ends out here. This one is one of the rarest pieces in my collection. Uh, I, I, I've hardly ever seen it, and I had to get it when I did see it. And this is one of the most bizarre things that I could think they could ever license for a costume. And why they would think any kid would want to buy this and go out in this. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Moray Eel from the Deep. I, I can't even imagine <laughs> any kid coming up to his parents and saying he wanted this costume. The, the only way I could think that this scenario would go down would be something like this. What do you mean, what is it? It's your Halloween costume. Daddy got it for you. The man at the store said this is a very popular costume this year. No, they were all out of Supermans and Batmans. This is the best one, he said. It's the Deep. It's a very popular movie right now. It's got uh, Nick Nolte, Jacqueline Bissett, uh, the guy from Jaws. No, not Nor not Roy Shiner. The other one. One that tells the story all about uh, how him and his friends get eaten by sharks in World War II. Yeah, yeah, he's in the movie. So come on, let's go. Let's go trick-or-treating. We're going trick-or-treating. It's Daddy's weekend, and we're going to have the best Halloween ever. Come on. Put it on. Stop crying. Thanks for stopping by the Sanctum. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those costumes. I enjoyed sharing them with you. And I hope you enjoyed this little trip into the aisles of Child World and Woolworth and Woolco digging through the boxes to find just the right character to be for Halloween. And I hope you find that right character. And I hope you all have a hundred Halloweens more. <laughs>